Okay, so now let's go uh, into a bit more details about the three cases of lateral earth pressure. So let's go to case one. Case one, it is at rest, at rest, earth pressure. I hope you can see what I'm writing here. Okay. So, at rest, earth pressure. So, what is this? So, now I'm going to draw um, a simple retaining wall right over here. Okay, so this is your retaining wall. And at the back here is the soil mass, the soil uh, that is being supported by this retaining wall. Okay, this is the soil. And now let's imagine you have a small mass of soil down here okay and this soil mass is subjected to vertical effective stress and it is also subjected to horizontal effective stress okay so vertical effective stress and horizontal effective stress so in order to make this soil mass stable so I have to introduce another arrow down here pointing upward okay so that these two balance and another arrow pointing to the to the right okay so the soil mass is in a stable uh, condition Right, so to proceed with uh, the calculation later, okay, so we have to relate these two um, stresses. All right, how to do that is horizontal effective stress divide by the vertical effective stress. This is equals to um, K. What is K? So K is the earth pressure coefficient. Okay. Earth pressure coefficients. So for at rest, okay, at rest, uh, horizontal effective pressure divided by uh, vertical effective pressure equals to K note k note is at rest earth pressure coefficient okay so this is at rest k note and we have to remember that uh k okay k note uh they are dimensionless dimensionless means no units okay dimension less no unit okay so what happened at rest is i forgot to uh, explain earlier so for at rest this is uh, wall a b and the height of the wall is sorry the height of the wall up to here is h okay so for at rest the wall is not moving either to the left or to the right so it's not moving away from the soil or into the soil it is just static okay it is just static in its original position in this position okay it's not moving either to the left or to the right it stays there here okay so for um, vertical effective stress over here it is equal to okay vertical effective stress is equal to gamma h okay what is gamma gamma is the unit weight you learned this already in uh, p80203 soil mechanics before okay unit weight of the soil all right so and then h is the height from uh, the ground surface to the
the death of the soul mass or the death of your interest okay h all right so in order to get therefore in order to get or to calculate horizontal effective stress it is equals to k note times vertical effective stress and this is equals to k note times gamma h so this is a horizontal effective stress right so this is um, at rest that's pressure why we are interested in horizontal it is because this is the force that will you know push or that will uh, that will be experienced by your retaining wall this 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 force h horizontal it comes from from the side okay that's why we are interested in horizontal effective pressure but in order to calculate um, horizontal effective pressure we also have to calculate the uh, vertical effective um, stress as well as the earth pressure coefficient okay so this is for the um, at rest of pressure okay so let me draw a line down here so let's move to the second case case two case two is active active earth pressure okay so what is active earth pressure i am going to draw the same uh, retaining wall here okay the same retaining wall and then it is supporting um, the same soil mass here and retaining wall a b with height uh, h over here okay and you have the same um small soil mass here okay you you will still have the same um, vertical effective stress as well as the horizontal effective stress okay like that but with this one uh, with active um, earth pressure it is the earth pressure that will cause the wall to move away from the soil I'm going to use a different color here okay so now let's imagine this is uh, the center line of uh, the original retaining wall so with active earth pressure this this pressure will cause the retaining wall here to move away from the soil okay basically this is the the position after the movement okay okay so your retaining wall will now be here all right and if you have you have a triangle uh, soil mass here so basically when this happens when the wall rotates about the bottom to this new position so your triangular soil mass here will feel sliding downwards this plane is that right okay will feel sliding downwards okay so what happened to this formulas okay in this situation your horizontal effective stress is actually equals to active um, earth pressure or sorry active um, yeah active earth of pressure so what will happen is um, therefore your horizontal effective stress over uh, vertical effective stress equals to uh, active earth pressure divided by vertical effective pressure and this is equals to k a not k note anymore so what is k a k a is active earth pressure coefficient okay k a is active earth pressure coefficient so in order to get um 
V active earth pressure equals to simple maths Ka multiply by vertical effective pressure. So this is active earth pressure case number two. All right, case number two, it moves away, the wall moves away from the soil. And this triangular soil mass here fill uh, downwards, okay? This failure plane, <clears throat> okay? So that's uh, the active earth pressure. Okay, let's go to the last case, to so the final case. It is case number three, case three, so it is obviously passive earth pressure. So what is this? I hope you can guess by now, okay? Since active is the wall moving away from the soil, what about passive? What do you think happened to the passive case? Okay, I'm going to draw one more time, the same retaining wall, okay? Supporting um the same soil mass okay and then again we have small soil mass here soil mass under investigation and then it is subjected to vertical effective stress as well as the horizontal sorry i'm sorry horizontal effective stress okay okay this is wall a b with a height h okay this is the center line of the wall so now what will happen um, in passive case so for passive of pressure the wall your retaining wall will move into the soil okay rather than moving away it is it will rotate uh, and moving into the soil it will basically pushing the soil inwards okay okay so this is the new position okay this is the new position of your wall. So the wall, this wall rotates sufficiently about the bottom to this new position. So the wall is moving into the soil. And that will happen to your triangular soil mass. You know, this is your triangular soil mass. So the mass will feel sliding outward this plane just now for active it is feeling sliding downwards this plane but this one is feeling sliding upward this plane all right okay so what will happen to the um, formula is uh, in this situation or in this case the horizontal effective um, stress is equal to passive Earth pressure. So we write it again. We have to rewrite it. So horizontal effective stress divided by vertical effective stress is equal to passive earth pressure divided by vertical effective stress. This is equals to Kp. So what is Kp? Kp is passive, obviously. Passive earth pressure coefficient okay passive earth pressure coefficient and in order to get um, the passive earth pressure doing the simple math kp times the vertical effective stress so this is uh, for the passive earth pressure case so that's it uh, enough about the theory then after this i am going to bring you guys to um to do the the calculation we go straight away into uh, the calculation uh for today we're going to do the at rest earth pressure uh calculation first i i hope inshallah from the calculation you will be able to understand uh, this concept better, inshallah.